you glad you're here tonight? Say amen. amen. Well, praise the Lord. It sure is good to be here. I know it's raining on the outside, and uh, but leaks, we don't, I don't think we have any leaks in here so far, so thank the Lord for that. We're so glad you come tonight. And I, I, I can honestly say this has been one of the best revival meetings that we've had in the history of Emmanuel Baptist Church. And we are coming up on our 13th anniversary, and I'd just like to tell the devil one more time, God has been good to us. And I brag on him tonight. I give him the glory and I give him the praise. Sure, it's good to have our visitors with us tonight. Good to have our visiting preachers with us. Good to have Brother Kim Witt and some of his men. They drove all the way from Anderson in this rain to get here. And then we got Brother Ralph Byers and his wife Bonnie with us tonight. And he drove all the way from Lawrence here in the rain. But uh, I don't think we have any other visiting preachers with us tonight. But we're so glad you men of God took time out to be with us. And I believe tonight you'll get a blessing. I believe you'll get some help. Appreciate Brother Brick Carr. His family, appreciate the blessing they've been to us this week. And we're just expecting God to do some great things. I mean, he already has done some great things. But I hope and pray he'll continue to do so tonight. So let's stand if you would, please. And we'll go to the Lord in a word of prayer. We'll ask the Lord's blessings to be upon the service tonight. And we would ask you, if you would, please, to pray for our sick folk. Uh, Sister Teresa Hallbrook asked that we pray for her aunt. Uh, they have called her family. And, in fact, I think they have took her, her aunt to hos called in hospice care. Uh, for her, so pray for her aunt, if you would, please. And then Frankie has an uncle that's uh, real sick and getting real low. Pray for him. And then some of our people are real sick, getting real low. Some of our shut-ins, Brother Frank Bailey, uh, Brother Jack took some food up there to them a while ago and said, Brother Frank's just talking, you know, off-the-wall stuff. And uh, just pray for him and pray for his wife. And Lord bless and be with them and meet their needs. And all the others that, uh, that we don't have time to call everybody's name, but God knows who they are. And just pray God will meet their needs. And pray God will bless this service tonight above all things. Uh, Brother Ralph uh, Byers, would you pray for us, please? Thank you, dear Jesus. Yes. Yes. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. I pray you continue to, to build this church, God. Oh, Lord, please help us. Yes. God, you heard all these requests, God, of all those that are sick and those that were mentioned back there. You've heard a little while ago, God, spoken and unspoken. Yes. God, you know the need, Father. God. Yes. God, you said your house would be a house of prayer. God. Yes. God, Amen. Amen. Come into your house. God, we pray, Lord. We love you so much, God. Yes, we do. Yes. Amen. Yeah, but... Yes, do something fresh, Lord. Know what God. Help us, Lord. Yes, yes. Help him, Father. Yes. Amen. God, if there's a backslider among us, God, Lord, I pray they'll come home tonight. Yes. Come back before they Yes. Amen. Amen. God, if there's a person that's been sick, God, Lord, I pray they'll come home tonight. Amen. God, if there's a Christian here tonight that's scared, God, and God, they just came in here down in the dump, God. Yeah, help them, Lord. God bless them. God, realizing that you can help them tonight, Lord. So, God, we're lifting all these things up that you trust in you. Yes. There's nothing we can do, but God, you said you can do all things. Yes. Thank God. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Granted our Father. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' holy sweet name and all of God's people. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Ralph. I'm glad we serve a God tonight that answers prayers. I'm glad we serve a God tonight. If we'll reach out to him, he can heal us of all our iniquities and all of uh, our ailments that we might be facing tonight. Amen. I'm glad I know him tonight. If you'll turn page number 51 in your hymn books, Page number 51, I know whom I have believed. We'll sing the first, Amen. the second, and the last verse. Page number 51. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ is. Yeah. 
servicio. Well, thank God. I'm glad I know him tonight. I'm more thankful that he knows me. He knows my name, thank God. If somebody calls my name, he's not surprised. Amen. Who they're talking about. He knows who they're talking about. And it's so wonderful to know him tonight. What a blessing it is. Boy, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm more thankful today I'm saved than I was yesterday. I believe we're nearing the shore, folk. I believe we're getting close to the coming of the Lord Jesus as we see the things happening, taking a place. I heard something on Sunday, and I mentioned it to the church, and now some people have come out and say it's, all, say it's just fake news. I've heard that it's fake news, and I've heard that it's true. I, I don't know which one to believe, you know. But I heard on Sunday, and I mentioned to the church, where that they, a bill is coming up that the governor in California, Jerry Brown, is going to sign a bill that will ban all sales of Bibles. I wouldn't surprise me if that don't happen in California. But now they say that's fake news. But I was at a meeting on Tuesday over at Brother Bill South's church, and the gentleman that was over there said the same thing, that they are got a bill in legislature over there to ban the sale of Bibles. Not banning the Bible, but they're banning sales of the Bible. We're living in a wicked time, folks. Hey, they may ban the bell of South, the, uh, bell of the sale of the Bible, but they ain't going to ban the Word of God. Amen. It ain't going to happen. And I thank God tonight. Hey, if I praise the Lord, we live in the Bible belt. But let me just say, if we're not real careful, stuff like that can happen in here too. Because it comes from, that, from the West Coast anyway this way. So, hey, folks, you ought to thank God for your Bible. Amen. Hold it dear. Don't let them take your guns. Don't let them take your Bible. Amen. Amen. The way I feel about it. But praise the Lord. Let's have the ushers to come forward, receive our offering, and uh, you give tonight. Everything you give will go to uh, Brother Rick Carr and, and the work in the ministry that the Lord's called him into and he's doing, and we appreciate him so much. He truly has been a blessing uh, to us this week, and we thank you. I know it's not him. I know it's God, but I thank God for using uh, Brother Brent in a special way and being such a blessing to our church. Let me mention this lest I forget it. Uh, in the morning, we're taking Brother Brent and his family uh, all of them want to come up to Strawberry Hill for breakfast in the morning. And some of you signed up. And some have already some have said you want to uh, go and didn't have your name on the list. I, we, we got enough room, I think, because I added some. I know how you Baptists are. <laughs> sort of late getting in, amen. But you want in, but you're late getting in. But anyway, we added a few uh, on there to tell them we coming. So we're going to meet at Strawberry Hill at 9 o'clock if you want to drive up there. And we're going to leave the church here if you want to ride the church van at 815 sharp. So uh, that's the announcement. So don't forget, be here or be there. Or we'll meet you in the air, one or the other, okay? All right, let's ask the Lord's blessing to be upon the gift and the giver tonight. And I'm with Brother Ken Witt. He's our good friend. Drive all the way from Anderson. I appreciate Brother Ken. If you would, he pastors the Bible Baptist Church at Anderson. Brother Ken, if you'd pray for us, please. Our Father, we thank the Lord for the joy and desire to be in the house Yes, of we do, dear Jesus. Yes. Grant it our Father. Yes. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ken.
getting that way too. I don't feel at home in this world anymore. Get a little homesick for heaven every now and then. Well, this week we've uh, not only enjoyed some good preaching, we've enjoyed some good singing from Brother Brent and his family, and uh, this week we've just let them do all the singing and all the preaching. Just get them, hey, just get our money's worth out of them this week. Amen. <laughs> I believe we can call it off right now, and we'd be, we can say we forgot our money's worth. But it's not about money, and Brother Brent didn't come for money. Brother Brent didn't mention a nickel or a dime. He just come doing the Lord's will. And I appreciate what his wife said last night. I won't go into the whole story, but I appreciate what she said last night. She said, we don't care nothing about that big stuff. She said, we just like to come places like this and be a blessing and enjoy the blessings of the Lord. You know, some people today, they got to be number one, names and lights. About to be the most popular group. We got to be the most popular preacher. I think we ought to stay humble. Allow the God, God to use us. And I can, say, I can say tonight, Brother Brent's been humbled this week. Now, he's preached his heart out. And he's going to do the same thing tonight, I'm sure. Brother Brent, y'all come on at this time, if you would, please. And uh, you sing, uh, sing for us. You know what, what the Lord leads you to do, brother. You got liberty to do what the Lord tells you to do. So good to have y'all tonight again. Bless your heart. I'll let you go. Amen. Well, I was threatened with it the end of my life if I didn't let my girls sing again. And I want to get out of here alive, so I'm going to let them sing. And uh, how many of you are glad that when you started on the old highway, you didn't have to get off and change highways yeah. along the way? But it's been good all along. And whatever got me started, I'm just going to take it the rest of the way. And there uh, ain't no reason in changing now. Somebody say amen. Amen. All right, we'll let them sing this old song. I'll take the old highway. Yeah. Amen. Amen.
Absolutely, just take his time out to try to be about your daily business and to what you do. I thank God for him tonight. I want you to listen to this old song. It's one of my favorites. Just simply says, Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. How many of you tonight you praise God? He's been good to you.
And I what Paul said. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God. I'm thankful tonight that there's power in the gospel. I'm not ashamed to preach. I'm not ashamed to sing about Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed to be a Christian. Listen. Oh 
any warning. The storm of your life has begun. And see no hope in the distance. You're frightened and nowhere to run. Oh, by now your vessel is filling. And you're thinking that you'll surely drown. But you cried out for help from the Savior. And you know you can't give up now because you prayed. Cause you held on with all of your might Child, your cries have awoken the Master He knows your voice Lift your hands, time to rejoice Child, your cries have awoken the Master You're out there worried, and he seems to sleep. The winds are so deadly, and water's so deep. But try to be patient, cause he'll soon bring peace. Just one word from his voice, and it all that cease. Because you prayed all night, cause you held on with all of your might. privilege it has been this week uh, to be with you and for you to invest in this meeting and uh, take time to love on us and uh, to worship the Lord. We all came not to see an evangelist, not to see a singing group, but we came to meet with Jesus. I found out that every moment I spend in God's presence, that's just one more thing the devil can't do against me. And uh, that's one more moment that I've been empowered by the Word of God to keep fighting. We're in a battle for our lives and the devil if he could. The Bible says that he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. Do you realize that if the devil had his way, you wouldn't be here tonight? <laughs> that gets me fired up. That thought hit me just a little while ago, not long ago. If the devil could, he would have stopped. He would have took your life from you. But just because the devil wants to don't mean the devil gets to. I'm glad there's a higher power than my enemy. I'm glad that I'm on the side of somebody who has all power. The devil's got some power in this world, but God's got all power. He is omnipotent. I'm thankful that I'm serving a God like him. I'm glad I'm not serving deadbeat Buddha. Amen? I'm glad I'm not serving Muhammad who's dead and in his grave. I'm glad I'm serving a God who's alive and well. Power sits in his bosom. Authority sits in his voice. And the devil's got to do what he says. I'm thankful that I'm serving that kind of God tonight. If you are too, I want you to holler real loud. Say amen. amen. Put a smile on your face and it look, at least look like you're happy to be here tonight. Amen. Yeah, aren't you glad you're not in a building that's leaking water on you and rain on you? But you're in the house of God and God's been good to us this week. 
I've absolutely enjoyed my time here. And uh, I want to say this. Uh, I, I, I appreciate you, preacher. I know there's a thousand other preachers and a thousand other evangelists you could have had come in here this week. You had, the options were many. I know that. Uh, but it means the world to me that you would allow us to be a part of this meeting. And uh, thank you for that. And uh, I appreciate your friendship. And I appreciate your love. And I appreciate a gallon of iced tea last night. I'm talking about sweet tea that we took home. And my kids had done dug into it before I could get to it. And uh, we may be, where's my brother, my tea making brother at? Wave at me. Right there you are. Uh, my brother, see me after service. I may need a little bit more. You told me that on the way in, and as I've been thinking about it, I may need a little bit more, but I appreciate you. Thank you for everybody who's prepared a meal and has provided for the church to be here and to feed us, amen, by physically, but I, I thank God that he showed up and fed us spiritually this week, and it's all him. He gets all the glory for it. I want you to take your Bibles tonight and go to 1 Samuel chapter 30, tonight in the Scriptures, 1 Samuel Chapter number 30 tonight. <clears throat> I appreciate all the visiting preachers uh, that are here tonight as well. And I'll echo the sentiments of, of uh, Pastor Taylor. I thank you for showing up. I know that you've got a hundred other things you could be doing tonight. If it wasn't nothing more than just taking a rest at your house, you could have done that. But I want to thank you for coming and uh, for traveling and supporting a meeting. Uh, that, that you didn't put on, but you want to support it. And I want to thank God. I want to tell you something. We're living in a day and age where preachers are fighting each other, and we're fighting the wrong enemy. Uh, where churches are fighting each other, and uh, we better realize that the enemy's the devil. We ought to start fighting him instead of fighting each other. And uh, it's not, I, I don't know what will be said about me when I die. But I want to tell you something. I'm going to be real with you all tonight. I, I want it to be said of me that he was a friend to preachers. And uh, I thank God for the men of God who have stayed faithful and has blazed the trail for me, a young preacher, to come along. I could not be where I'm at if it wasn't for what you've done. And I want to thank you for that. And thank you, men of God, for supporting this meeting. 1 Samuel chapter 30, are you there? Say amen. amen. The Bible says, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives and were, that were therein and they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. And so David and his men came to the city Behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. And then David and the people, listen to what's being said here about the situation that's going on. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinion and the Jezreelites and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Car Carmelite. And watch this, verse number 6. And David was greatly distressed. Have you ever been distressed in your soul? Have you ever cried so much that you didn't even have any more tears to cry? Has the enemy attacked your house so much that it just left you in ruin to pick up the pieces. David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. And every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Verse number 8, And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, I'm glad I've got a God that will answer tonight. God said one word, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. You can have a seat. 
And let's pray tonight. Our Heavenly Father, I ask you in these next few moments that you'd help me to preach. Lord, uh, there's no way that in my own ability I could do what I'm about to do. So Lord, if they're going to get any help, it's going to have to come through you. I ask in Jesus' name that you would bind every power of hell. God, you would cleanse us of every sin, every thought, every lust, every action, anything that's unbecoming of a child of God. You would wash it from us right now. And Lord, let the seed be planted from the Word of God into our hearts that it may take root and grow fruit in our lives. Lord, let this not be the last time that these folks hear this word tonight but may it echo in their souls and God I ask to every distraction that you'd run it out of this place every demonic influence that you'd run it out of this place every bitterness and every heartache and every hurt and habit God you'd run it far from this place Lord you'd take up precedence this is your house we're your guests in your house tonight I ask you in Jesus' name that you would empower us to preach. Lord, I don't want to be a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal to your people. I don't want to be just somebody that makes a lot of noise. But Lord, I want your word to make a lot of difference in their lives. I ask this in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, I humbly pray, amen and amen. It's a familiar text that I read to you about how David was all fighting one enemy and while he's fighting one enemy coming in the back door where his family was comes another enemy. That's just like the devil. The devil does not play fair. Is there anybody in here that you have felt the attack and the hassles from hell in this life and the devil has come to attack your life before and you've seen the devastation The devil does not come to toy with us. The devil does not come to play with us. We must be on guard that this is not a game that we're playing, but the devil wants to destroy you. As I've already said it, the Bible said that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil will not be finished with you if he has his way until he leaves you in utter destruction. I want to tell you something. The devil is coming after our homes. The devil's coming after our families. The devil is coming after our children. The devil's coming after those loved ones that we have. And if he had his way tonight, he would absolutely leave everyone in total destruction. He would leave our marriages in divorce. The divorce rate in our country is as high as it's ever been. He would leave our children as demonically impressed and possessed as he could. I've never seen it on the rise like I see it today. Our children are prone and exposed to demonic things in this world. They can find on their own phones and on social media any vice of this world. They can connect with the wrong people. I'm here to tell you, I want to warn you tonight, the devil seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. He does not play fair. The Bible said that that David's enemy came in while he's fighting one enemy. The other enemy comes in and burns his houses to the ground, takes his children and his family. But I want to stop long enough and give you something God's put in my mind. It does say that when the enemy took every child and woman, boy and girl, that they did not slay not one of them. I want to tell you something. Even when the devil comes into your home, God still got enough power to preserve the life of your children. God still got enough power to preserve the life of your family. I'm glad that even though we may be hassled, we may be wrecked, we may be at times ruined, God still has the mighty power of preservation. The Bible said that the enemy came in and destroyed, and here David is And he's lost all that he has doing 
what God told him to do. It is said that David's most popular battle was the battle that he fought against Goliath. But David's most important battle was the battle he fought after Ziklag. Because in popularity, people see you succeed in life and they applaud you, but that applause is very cheap worship. It's very cheap applause. It is not the battles that we fight in the eye of the public that is the most important, but it's the battles that we fight in private that nobody else knows about that is the most important. And the Bible said that when David came back home, he found everything in ruin. And the devil and the enemy had stolen away from him what was rightfully his. I want to tell tell you something mamas uh, the devil will steal your children from you the devils will steal their hearts from you I want to tell you church member the devil will steal your joy the devil will try to take your peace the devil will try to do all that he can uh, that those things that God wants has deposited into your life the devil wants to take them from you I've never seen it like I've seen it today the oppression and the depression that sits in the house of God. Everywhere I go, there's people that have debts they can't pay. They've got doubts they can't answer. They've got depression they can't shake. But I want to tell you something. That same man by the name of David wrote this. Many are they increased that trouble me. Many there be which say of my soul there is no help for him and God. But but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I'm glad that when I get down, I've got a God that picks me up. Tonight, I want to preach from this subject, taking back what the devil stole from you. I don't know if the devil has taken your joy and your happiness but it's about time you go back and get it. I like that old song, I will march into the enemy's camp and I'm going to take back what the devil stole from me. I want to tell you something. There are some things that you may have to lose along the way. You may have to bury loved ones along the way. You may have to lose some things. And just because you've lost something don't mean that you're always going to get it back necessarily. But I believe that without a doubt there are some things that God wants you to possess. God wants you to have. And you don't need to let the devil steal it from you. And God said give it up and go after it. Don't let the devil take the blessing that belongs to you and your family. Don't let the devil take the peace that passes all understanding. It's time that the army of God rise up and march and go forward and say I'm not going to let the devil steal it from me again. I'm going back after my stuff. I don't know about you, but the devil will mess with your stuff. He will steal your stuff if you let him. The devil's got some power. I've already said it. But I believe we give the devil a little bit more credit than he's really worth. Because the Bible said that we got a lot more in God than we could ever imagine if we could just plug into that power. I want to take back some things that the devil has stole from me. I, I'll give you a, a, a story out of our personal endeavors. Uh, not long ago, we was in Virginia preaching in a revival meeting and uh, we came back after the revival meeting and I went to go look for my trailer that I hauled with me and uh, come to find out it wasn't where I put it. Now, that don't mean much because I lose a great many things. I get calls all the time. Preacher, you left your shoes or you left your coat or you left your children and, and we got to go back and get them. 
I, I'm liable at any time to ask my wife. That's why God's been so good to me to not only give me a beautiful wife, but she's a smart one too. And her lot in life, you pray for her. She's got issues. She's got to put up with me the rest of her life. She said, till death do I part. And I'm going to hold her to it, amen. But I, I lose things sometimes. So I, I called her up. I said, baby, where, where did I park the trailer? She said, you parked it over there down at the end of the cul-de-sac. I went to the end of the cul-de-sac where I thought I, I said, that's where I thought I parked it. Turn to, come to find out, it turns out somebody stole my trailer from me. I had my sound equipment in it. I had some clothes in it. We had some of the kids' stuff in it. I had all of our CDs in it. And somebody just hauled off and took it. I got real in the flesh. Can I say it like that? I, I called up. We had investigators come out looking for our stuff. And, and that, I never will forget it. That, that inspector told me, he, the investigator, he said, Sir, you've got 72 hours before you can recover your stuff. He said, if you don't recover it in 72 hours, you will not get it back. I said, you're not very comforting right now. That means I got just a little time to go find my stuff. And this was a day later. So I was even an extra day without my stuff and not finding it. 72 hours passed and I still didn't have my stuff. We never recovered that stuff. I never will forget it. My wife prayed in the middle of the night and said, well, you know what? It must be that God just wanted this to happen and God wanted to do something for us and God wanted to do this and, and it just so happens that when they bust open that lock, get in that trailer, maybe they'll find some of your preaching material in there. Maybe they'll get some of your books and they'll listen to some of that music and I mean she's just very positive about it and she said and maybe they'll fall under conviction and get saved. That's what my wife did. I did not pray pray such a thing. I said God, I hope you let the wheels fall off that trailer. I, God, let it mess them up. Don't kill them God, but let them mangle them up real good. My wife just staring at me shaking her head thinking you've done lost your mind praying that in front of the kids. There are some things that you may lose along the way. But I was bound and determined that I wanted my stuff back and I went to looking for it. God blessed us and ten times over, we counted it to the penny, ten times over, God gave back everything that we had lost and I give Him glory for it. But I, mean, I said all that to say this, the devil will take your stuff and the devil, you got to get an attitude about it. You got to get a, a, a spirit about you and say there's some things that I I'm just not going to let the devil have of my stuff. I'm going to do whatever it takes to go back and get my stuff. Taking back what the devil stole from us. I believe that every Christian in here tonight can encourage themselves in the Lord like David did after an attack comes, after you've been stolen from. And I believe you can do it because of the glaring exhortations found in the Scripture. The exhortation number one that I want to give you out of the Scripture is this. The enemy does not attack unless he has something to gain by. You need to know something. You possess something that the devil wants. The devil does not attack because you owe no threat to him. But the devil will come after you for the very reason because he knows that if you hold on to what you have, that's just more tools that you've got to fight against him. Hey, if you've got that peace that we've been talking about, people will look at you and say, I don't know what they've got, but I need something like that. If you've got your shout when you get in church, you just shake the 
devil at his very foundation when he realizes uh, that he's been messing with your stuff but he still can't take your shout from you. You need to realize something. God's put in your possession some things uh, that if the devil can, the devil wants to take it. And it's not because you've messed up. It's not because you've stumbled. It's not because you're out of God's will. But it's the opposite true. The devil attacks you because he knows there's potential of God in you. The devil don't mess with nobody who ain't living right. In fact, I can prove it out of Scripture. In Acts chapter number 12, it said that Herod stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. The devil's not going to come after the drunk on the street. The devil's not going to come after that backslider. The devil's not going to come after somebody who don't ever worship, who don't ever praise, who don't ever read the Bible, who don't ever pray, who don't ever serve God faithfully. Those people who sit in their recliners on Sunday morning, Sunday night, they don't ever have problems like you got problems. Things don't fall apart like it does in your life and you're trying to figure out, God, what did I do that was wrong. You didn't do nothing wrong. You've been doing something right. That's why the devil comes after you. You need to realize something. If you feel the attacks of hell, that's a good sign you're moving in the right direction. Because the devil don't mess with nobody that's walking in the same direction that he's walking in. I've run headlong into the devil on many occasions and I beg God, God please show me what I've done wrong. Why is it that a man who abuses his wife and his children, why is it that a man that will shoot dope up his whole life, why is it a man that will curse you seems like he don't have no financial trouble, seems like they don't ever get cancer, seems like they don't ever struggle and God remembers reminded me and encouraged me out of this text uh, that when the devil attacks, it's a good sign that you've got something he wants from you. Glaring exhortation number one is the enemy does not attack unless he has something to gain. I said this other night, I'll say it again. If you're sitting there and you don't have no problems, if you're sitting there and you don't ever struggle, if you're sitting there and you don't ever have a problem with the devil, then you just be quiet. The rest of us gonna shout a little while. We're gonna give God praise a little while that even though the devil wanted to destroy us, I'm still here. <laughs> I don't know what you've gone through, but if you can look around and say, I'm still here, that's good enough to praise God for. I don't understand why sweet little ladies got to go through cancer. We was in Columbia the other day and, and a lady stood up and cancer eating her body up and down. And with a little crippled hand, she raised that crippled hand up and just waved and said, Preacher, I haven't been able to come to church in a while, but I'm glad God let me come tonight. That fired me up. I believe that if that little lady who's got cancer in her body can praise God, then I've got every reason, I've got every right that I ought to praise God tonight. Oh, the devil's not coming after nobody. I remember hearing a story. John R. Rice was talking to a man, and a man said, you always get up and preach about things you've, that's happened to you and losing loved ones and losing financial abilities and, and all this stuff. He said, I've lived my life as a Christian for 50 years, and I've never had the trouble that you've had. John R. Rice looked at him and said, if you twisted the devil's tail like I do, you would. I, I'm not big enough to twist the devil's tail like John R. Rice did necessarily or any of these great men of God. And I do not even associate myself or put myself on the same platform as them. But I will say this, God has proven to me time and time again that when the devil attacks me, it is because I'm possessing something that he wants from me. I want you to see this tonight. I move forward. I want you to see that the devil came while they were fighting somebody else. You know, when the devil was going to come after you, child of God, it's when you're doing your best to try to help somebody else. 
It's when you're standing in the pulpit and you're preaching the word of God, that's when the devil's coming. Discouragement sets in on these. You need to pray for your pastor. You need to lift up the arms of your pastor. I've heard too many times in this Laodicean age that a pastor is, is on the same level and he's on the same plane as everybody else and he's, he's no better off than we are. But I want to tell you something. When a, a person is sick in a hospital or when they're sick and dying in a hospital bed, not every member in the church is up at night praying for your loved ones. But this man of God and this sister of God sitting right Right here, we'll call out your name when everybody else is laying down on the job. They'll stand in the gap and make up the heads. Pray for your pastoral staff. Pray for the people of God that God's deposited in your life because they bear burdens you'll never, ever understand. But it's when you're fighting the enemy that the devil will attack. Not only did he come when they were fighting an enemy, but he came after the family. I found out that if the devil can't get to me, he will go to her. My wife's been suffering from something that nobody knows. I mentioned it the first time last week when we were in Chicago and asked the church to pray because it became unbearable. She's got a physical issue and it's not anything that's just, she's not dying or anything, I hope. Because if she dies, I'm going with her. Amen. But she's got, she's got things that doesn't make sense that she has to deal with, migraines and things like that. She wakes up in the middle of the night sore and, and in a lot of pain and, and I'm trying to figure out what is it, God? Is it something that we're not doing right? And God reminded me that when the devil came after Job, part of the plan to attack was to attack the body. But then he attacked his wife. And I want to tell you something. The devil's coming after the weak ones in our congregation. He's coming after the family. I've never seen it. The high rise of divorce rates and children getting out of church. A statistic that says 70% of 18 year olds make a decision not ever to go back to church again. That's why you don't see a lot of 20 year olds in church. I'm thankful there are some in here tonight. That means that's a good, healthy sign you're doing what you ought to. But there's a lot of churches that are without the 20-year-olds and the 30-year-olds. And that's when we make some of the biggest decisions of our lives. But we make them out of the church, disconnected from God. We make them without the counsel of God. The enemy's coming to attack because he has something to gain. The enemy comes in not only because you were fighting because of your family, but the enemy comes in because of past failures. Notice who the enemy was. It was the Amalekites. Those Amalekites was told to Saul, take out every one of them. Destroy every one of them. Sometimes you're fighting an enemy that somebody else left behind for you to take over. David didn't get the command from God to kill the Amalekites, but because the last regime didn't do it, the last generation didn't do it, the generation before that didn't do it, now he's dealing with past failures. Not only that, but they come so that you can lose favor. The Bible said that when the enemy came in, and I know I'm not preaching one of those sermons tonight where you're going to run aisles and we're going to jump pews and all that kind of stuff and throw hymn books at each other, but this is exactly what God told me because somebody in here can't worship God like they want to because the devil's been messing in your stuff. And I don't know who you are, but I want to encourage you before we leave this place tonight, and we're going to shout a little while in just a minute because I'm going somewhere, Amen. But I want us to all get around this altar and say, God, help me to go back and take my stuff back. Get my joy back. Get my happiness back. The Bible said that when the enemy came in and attacked David and burned all their city to the ground, took their wives, that then the same men that fought beside of him just moments before 
talked of stoning him. Preachers, have you ever had people that once said, I'll never leave you, I'll stand by you, I'll fight for you, I'll take a bullet for you. And it was them who was aiming the gun the next time you turned around. Am I in the right place? I don't know. Maybe I'm not preaching at the right place tonight. Y'all look all sanctified and sanctimonious tonight. I'm going to tell you something. When the devil attacks, it's, it's to take your favor away. But watch what David did. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. When you can't depend on others, you got one you can depend on. Mm, I'm about to shout and run a lap right there. I'm glad that when others turn their back, I've got a God who sees me face to face. When others don't want to help and others turn and walk away, I've got a God who will never leave me. He'll never forsake me. See, I don't have to have the choir singing in order for me to worship God. This text tonight proves to me that I don't have to have somebody preaching a sermon necessarily for me to be able to get excited in God. It tells me that even when everybody else don't want to reach up and help me, that I've got a God willing to reach down and help me. It tells me that when I can depend on nobody else, I can still depend on God. There's a moment not long ago in the middle of the night I woke up and I felt hassled by hell. God was doing big things, but the devil was messing with our stuff. And I got up with anxiety. I got up with depression. I got up with darkness. And I remember getting up out of my bed, walking and pacing the floor I looked over at my wife and I dare not wake the sleeping woman I couldn't go in there and wake up my children I couldn't call my pastor at 3 o'clock in the morning he'd kick me out of church but then I fell on my face and I began to call on an almighty God and it was like I heard his sandals slapping down the hallway he walked into the room wrapped his arms around me and he said I got you hey listen when you've got nobody else God has you bless his holy name exhortation warned the enemy attacks because he has something to gain glaring exhortation number two I want you to listen to this and I'm going to move on Listen to this real quickly. Helping someone who is lost all will lead you to recovering your all. Say it again, preacher. Thank you for asking. Helping someone who has lost their all will help you and lead you to recovering your all. I want you to watch this. Can I come down here and preach a little bit? I feel good right now. I'm not James Brown, but I feel good. The Bible said that David inquired of the Lord. And I want to tell you, in order to get your stuff back, the first place you need to go is you need to pray about it. I see a lot of people on Facebook who need to get their face off of Facebook and get their face in the book, amen. And But they have a lot of opinions and they say, I've got all these troubles and I've got all this stuff. Facebook, the other day I read it, I'm on there, but it's not on me, amen. I read it the other day and it said, what was you think? What are you thinking? I shook my head, I said, Facebook, you don't want to know what I'm thinking. The Bible says a fool uttereth all his mind. You ain't got to tell it all on Facebook. Can I get an amen? But you know what David did? David prayed about it. One of the first things I tell anybody, I'll pray with somebody. If somebody asks me to pray with them, I think a man did it the other night, asked me to pray with them, I'd do it on the spot because I'll forget it. I don't want to ever say, I'll pray for you and forget about it. 
so I do it on the spot. I don't ever want to be that person, that preacher that says one thing and don't ever do what he says. But I want to encourage you as well, before you go to anybody else, have you prayed about your stuff? David inquired of God. He prayed and he pursued. The Bible said that as he pursued, as they came along, you know the story, it's in there. If you've never read it before, go home. It's a good place to start a Bible study. The Bible said that they came upon an Egyptian that had been left out in the field. And the Bible said that they brought this boy to where David the king was. And they said, we found him left behind. David, he looks sick. David, he looks messed up. David, he looks weak. The Bible said that he had fallen and he was so weak that he had become unconscious and for three days didn't eat, didn't drink. And this boy that was laying in a field, just an old Egyptian, he wasn't a Jew, he was an Egyptian just a Gentile dog left out in the field but the Bible said that they brought him to David and David didn't kill him David didn't laugh at him David didn't say I don't have time for him but the Bible said that David cared for him then he fed him catered to him and then he carried him Now, I want you to understand something. David has lost everything he's got. And he sees somebody else who's lost everything they had. And what we are prone to do is, I don't have time for your stuff. I'm still trying to find out where I can get my stuff. But that ain't the heart of God, is it? Aren't you glad that Jesus, when he found you in a field somewhere and he found you lifeless and he found you without hope and he found you without help, that Jesus didn't look at you, a Gentile dog, and say, I don't have time for you. You know why I like to come to church? You know why I still take time for God? It's because God took time for me. Here's what David did. With a heart after God. He said care for him. Take care of him. Nurse him. Feed him. But David you've lost all you got. Take out of my own rations. And feed that boy. See. I wish I had more time to preach this. The devil made a, your enemy made a mistake when he started leaving people behind that he didn't think was any worth to him anymore. You know what I'm looking across this congregation at? I'm looking across this congregation that the devil, some of them, the devil had left them high and dry. The devil had left them broken. The devil had taken their lives, just wrapped it up and ruined it and did his dead level best to take their lives from them. Some of them been through divorce. Some of them gone through darkness. Some of them had debts. Some of them had depressions. Some of them had deeds that they're not proud of and the devil did his best to destroy them but look at you tonight sitting up in the house of God clothed and in your right mind because the devil left you behind to die but the king found you he favored you he fed you he loved you what a God we serve tonight I hope y'all got time for this. I know where the lights are. If you don't, I'll shut them off when I'm done. You know what David did? He didn't say, I ain't got time to pray for you. I got my own stuff. We get so busy that we fail to see what God put us here for. Listen, if God saved me just for heaven, he would have took me then. But God left me here to care for somebody the devil left behind. I don't know about you, preacher, but I'm the type of preacher. I ain't much, I promise you. But when I see somebody sitting up off 
past and thinking that they have arrived. That don't do a whole lot for me. But when I see somebody whose life is in shambles, whose life is broken, and my eyes get real big, and I start getting real, I mean slobbery right here, and I start saying, sick them, God. Wouldn't that be a good one for you to go at? I add God on. I provoke Him to want to save people. I said, the devil, the devil said that there'll never be nothing. He's put you to the challenge. He said, you can't. And then I watched God do what the devil said he'd never do. I love that. It's those broken people that I love. And the Bible said, I ain't got enough time for all this, but I'm having a good time up in here. The Bible said that as that boy came to, David asked him a question. He said, who are you? Where are you from? The Bible said that that boy said, I'm an Egyptian. And I was left behind by the Amalekites. And we had went into the, uh, the Ziklag. We had burned Ziklag. We had taken all their wives. And we had done all that stuff. David didn't ask him all that. <laughs> but that's just how good God is. David just said, where are you from? Who are you? And he began to tell his story. And as he told his story, it became very familiar to David. And David, it hit him. God brought me to take care of him so God could take care of me. Listen, I'll move on because I know you're tired of me anyway. Y'all ain't never going to have me back, but I'm having a good time. (laughs) I want to tell you something. If you can let go of your stuff, seek ye first the kingdom of God. His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. But you know what? You can spend your whole life going after things and never getting your hands on them. You'll call for things and they won't obey your voice. But if you seek Him first, and you go after him, when he calls your things, y'all don't want no preaching tonight. If the winds have to obey his voice, so do your things do too. They won't listen to your voice, but when the master calls them, they got to come to him. That's why you need to go after him first. And him will get all the rest of it. Somebody say amen. Amen. We were in the field. We had taken all we had. I fell sick. They left me behind. David said, will you take me to where they are? He said, as long as you don't turn me back over to them. (laughs) When I got saved... I didn't want that devil's crowd anymore. When I tasted of how good God was, see, when I saw, I ain't got enough time to preach all this, when I saw my friends leave me abandoned in a mess and didn't want to help, when everything was going good, they wanted to be around. When everything was good, I had favor. But when things fell apart, nobody helped me. I had no man to help me. But when Jesus reached further down, then I could reach up and he picked me up out of the muck and mire of life and he set my feet on a solid rock and he established my goings when I tasted of the Lord I didn't want to go back to that same crowd again don't let me go back there I'm with you because helping someone else will lead you to where God can help you I gotta move on I gotta give you the last one The Bible, you know the story, you know how it ends. The Bible said that they came to where Ziklag was and David waxed strong against them and overtook them just like that. The battle that you're fearing, God's already given you the victory of it. All you've got to do is just get up and go back and get your stuff. It was easy. And the Bible said that when they came 
back with all the spoils. See, God not only gave them their stuff back, but he gave them so much more. If you only knew how God wants to bless you, you wouldn't want to leave a place like this. Let these services revive your spirit and turn your eyes back to God. Get your eyes off all that stuff. Get your eyes on God. The Bible said that when he came back, he said, I'm going to give every man part of the spoil. He had some of those boys that was wanting to stone him just a chapter before, a few verses before, that said they didn't go over with us. Why did they get to? Because there was 200 that stayed with the stuff. The Bible says they stayed by the stuff. 400, there's 600 altogether, 200 stayed by the stuff. 400 went over and fought the battle. And when they came back, those 400 said, look at all we've got. And David said, give them some of your stuff, that 200. <laughs> and they said, but David, they didn't go over and fight with us. They don't get, they didn't have to sweat. They didn't have to bleed. They didn't have to swing a sword. They stayed over there and did nothing. And David said, from this day forward, here's a statute that even those who go and fight will receive their spoil, but will also divide it with those that stayed back and stuck by the stuff. Amen. Amen. <laughs> There's some little saints of God that I've gotten to meet along the way, that they may not fight big battles. They don't get the name up in lights like you're talking about. But I got little old ladies. You can ask my wife. I got a little old lady that wrote me in her Bible and she'll pray for me. She gave me a hanky. I don't know what that means. I don't think there's anything to it, but she gave me a little hanky And it had inscribed a Bible verse on it. And she said, every time you see it, you know this little old lady is in North Carolina praying for you. I got a little grandma that's over right beside Mary Black in Waterford nursing home right now. She can barely, barely know anybody that walks in. The last time I saw her, Her eyes lit up. She grabbed my hand. She didn't even know my name. She just said, my preacher. How about that? (laughs) My preacher. Amen. See, before I was ever born, that woman was praying. Amen. For a grandbaby. There's some who don't get to bask in the glamour and the glitter and don't get all the people on social media bragging about how good they are. But you've got some sweet little ladies here. You've got some sweet men here that love you and love God. I want to tell you something. God ain't going to leave you out. God's going to love on you. And all of us who get have the ability to go and fight the devil, we're going to fight him for you. But you are part of me. I'm a part of you. We're a part of each other. And if I get any blessings, it's your blessing too. I'm thankful for the ones who have stuck by the stuff. Here's that last exhortation tonight, and I'll let you go home. I'll take my seat, preach you, and do whatever you want to. Don't be afraid to share who you are with other people and all that God has done so that others can rejoice in the victory that God gives them. Let people be a part of your church that may not be just like you are may not have the strength to be the bulwark and the stalwart that you are But the more they sit around you, the more strength they get 
and the more blessing they see. What a God we serve that don't just hold back but freely gives to all. What a God. Tonight, I'm challenged. I want my stuff back. I've decided the devil ain't taking my happiness. I'm going to laugh. And I'm going to enjoy life. Some of you think I'm crazy. You're about right. But I'm having the time of my life living for God. We'll challenge you tonight. I don't know what you want to do as far as an invitation, but hey, Gracie, come up here and sing He Sees What You Don't. While she sings this song, I wonder how many of you tonight say, God, the devil's been messing in my stuff. Yeah. You get around this altar and say, God, I know you've been here every night at this altar, but come on back again. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, and say, God, I know the devil's wanting my stuff. I feel the attack coming. But I want you to help me fight for my stuff. Maybe the devil's already taken your children. Maybe the devil's already taken a loved one and is trying his best to ruin them. Won't you pray and say, God, I'm going and getting them back. Yeah. Help me, God. Amen. Take my stuff back. How many of you tonight join me in this altar? Just pop right up out of your seat. You don't even need to wait for the music. Just just pop right up out of your seat and get around this altar and say, God, help me to get my joy back, my happiness back. God, help me to get my stuff back. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Stand to your feet all over the house. Come on, that's it. Come on. You feel the devil attacking your marriage? Come on. Talk to him. You feel the devil attacking your people? Come on, talk to him. You feel the devil attacking your children? Come on, talk to him. Say, God, can I pursue? God, can I go after it? God, I want my stuff back. I want my peace. I want my joy. I want my happiness. I want my strength. I want my faith. God, I want my family. I want my standing with you. God, I want to be closer. God, I want my stuff back. Each trial, that's it. what your stuff is tonight you know what the devil's taken away from you you know what he's robbed from you do as David did pursue you'll get what he took away from you (laughs) what a great message
still have time to come tonight. You know, a lot of times we don't really life, realize what we really have lost. Sometimes the devil comes in and takes you. We don't realize it's gone. No matter what he's got, I believe his brother Brent preached. We can get it back. So many of our Christians today are walking around living defeated lives. I've said this many times, we ought to be the happiest people in the world. God's good to us. Hey, we're not losing folk tonight. Some yes. people think, well, hey, we're losing. We're not losing. Thank God. We've already won. Yes. We just need to shout to victory. And let the devil realize, hey, we didn't get in to get out. We're not throwing the towel in. We're not quitting. We're not, wag we're not waving the white flag of surrender. We're going to serve God and keep what we've got spiritually. Thank you, Brother Brent, for the message. Thank you for the music that we had tonight. Thank God for the spirit that came in this place and gave Brother Brent the liberty to preach. Thank God for those that have come to this altar each night. The altar's been filled literally each night this week. And we prayed, we prayed not for a meeting, but we prayed for revival. And I believe the Lord's giving us a taste of what it means to get right with the Lord. Will everybody get right? Everybody should. The only one you're responsible for is yourself. Amen. Amen. Can I, hey, like I said the other night, you can start a real big fire with one match. That's what we do, just start a big fire around here. The fire God burn. You know, it's sad to say today, and we're fixing to go home, it's sad to say today, if God would come in and pour his spirit out upon this place and all these people would get filled with the Holy Spirit of God and act like they should, it'd scare half of us to death. Yes, sir. Would that be all right? We ought to do that anyway, amen? So I encourage you tonight. Please, if you can, come back tomorrow night. And uh, I appreciate those that are here tonight. I appreciate Brother Ken and his men being here. And Brother Ralph and his wife being here tonight and them coming, that's a blessing. It's good to have our other visitors that are with us tonight. Thank you for coming. It's always good for our people. Uh, hey, visitors are invited. Members are expected. Amen. So I hope you plan on coming back tomorrow night. Now, tomorrow night for supper, it's going to be or dinner, have, whatever you want to call it, uh, it'll start at 5 o'clock, and we're going to have pizza and salad and dessert for tomorrow night. Now, if you plan on coming tomorrow night to eat, there's a sign-up sheet back there. If you would, please put your name on it. And if anybody's coming with you, just put the number beside your name, how many's coming, to make sure we'll have enough, okay? We've had, a, we've had enough every, every night this week, I'm telling you. And I've tried to help eat most of it up. Now, the next, tomorrow night, I need to try to lay off, especially when, since we're going to Strawberry Hill in the morning. Uh, that, you'll be full all day after you eat up there. But anyway, thank you so much for coming. Be careful going home. and hope you have a safe time. And if you can't come tomorrow night, Please pray for us, if you would, please. So we give our heads and be dismissed to the word of prayer, and ask God's blessing to be upon us as we travel home. And we ask Brother uh, Robert Thomas, if he will. Brother Robert, if you'll pray for us, please, in this message.